Welcome to uh, the latest iteration of ARC Artist Talks. Uh, this is the uh, first uh, of the Artist Talks that we've actually done uh, in our Spotlight Gallery. So we have uh, converted the office at ARC uh, into an additional gallery. Uh, in addition to being, and it's still still the office as well. Uh, it turns out it's a really wonderful gallery. Uh, and uh, Greta and Manu Schnitzler, uh, Schnitzler are um, uh, showing their uh, photographs at this time. This particular exhibition uh, actually has a uh, subtitle. It's uh, uh, in addition to being Spotlight uh, Schnitzler Photography, which is all of the exhibitions in the uh, in the office are spotlight something. Uh, it has a subtitle of Safer at Home. Um, so uh, Greta and Manu, if you want to unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, Hi, everyone. Then, uh, uh, you want to talk a little bit about uh, how that relates to, I, I assume Safer at Home relates to the pandemic in some way? Definitely. Um, when we started putting the uh, the show together, we realized we we have this great collection of photos that were made really within five or ten minutes of our house in in various locations in San Francisco that uh, mean a lot to us. And a lot of them were made during these last ten months of um, of sheltering in place uh, to various degrees. Uh, and so. Um, you know, I, I love a, a, a quote that I heard that was attributed to, uh, to Imogene Cunningham, which was, uh, if you can't make a good picture in your own backyard, you're just no damn good. <laughs> That's so, great. I love that. So uh, she was kind of a feisty photographer who was an inspiration and also a San Francisco photographer. And she also said there was no better place to live a life than San Francisco. So uh, I got to agree with that. In thinking about that, we, we thought about these wonderful images we have that were all made close to home and mostly during the pandemic and uh, thought that would be a good theme for the show. Um, mm -hmm. Manu's been going out kayaking, so a lot of these in the very early morning hours, which I will say is by himself because I am not that early riser, nor do I appreciate the cold on the bay in the early morning hours, but he has really made some amazing images in those early morning hours, especially right when night is turning to daylight. And so that's been a, a theme and a lot of these come from those outings. Well, I'm going to have you give a little tour around the office, but before we do that, I'm sure a lot of you are going to have questions as we go along. If you could hold your questions until the end, and then if you just type the letter Q in uh, chat, uh, then I will call on you uh, at the end and, and we can uh, field questions at uh, that point. But right now, uh, Manu and Greta are going to give you just a little tour. Uh, what you can see, by the way, through the glass doors is the show that's about to go up, uh, all laid out on the floor, about to be installed. But if you want to just show uh, the Spotlight Gallery, that would be great. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm really, uh, we're really happy to be able to show our work in person. This is uh, a lot of work that we're doing and up on Instagram or online and uh, having the opportunity to uh, have especially large prints shown in person it is always is always fun and rewarding uh, and, and getting uh, getting feedback from people who can come in person and really see the workflows and 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 in, 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 in large format is always uh, is always fun so this is uh, we're kind of split the work into those four walls that we had to work with and they're somewhat um, of course related onto the same theme but but somewhat different so this is this is a wall mostly about mo uh, night night photography on the bay, and those are those three pieces are printed on metal. We do a lot of work of our work print, printed uh, on metal, um, which really helps the really makes the the, the colors pop. We really, really like, like like that way of presenting the work. Uh, the second wall here is a series of seven images. We call this waterline. waterline. So this is uh, as I'm as I'm as I'm outside uh, on the bay on the kayak. I have this view which is very close to the water, and I'm often going past ships and, and boats. And and um, 
the, the markings and the and the weathering on those boats is, is always uh, is always attracting to me and the, the different lights reflecting on the water and onto the the ships uh, in particular is, is is something that I'm very attracted to. Those are printed on paper and framed. And then we have a set of three very large images. They don't maybe look that big from here, but they're 30 by 40, which is uh, fairly large for us. And it's, it's always, again, it's printed on metal. And it's always really nice to be able to see our images large like, like this. This is, um, um, we're, we're used to seeing them on the, on, on the phone, but, but having a, a large print is, is, is a totally different experience, I feel. It's, it's, lets you come in, see it from a distance, and then come in, approach, and, 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 and spend time with it and, and get really into the, the images. And then the final wall is a series that we uh, did, which is really um, reflections in water of a lit sculpture uh, that is by Leo Villarreal, and uh, just an amazing piece of work that's in front of the Exploratorium. And um, so this one is, uh, is more abstract than we usually do. And we were just thrilled to be able to print very large prints of these for this show because they really almost feel like you're falling in. We call it uh, Flight to the Galactic Center, this series. Um, and so uh, it, it's just uh, get the real pulsing sensation because there's movement of the water, movement of the lights, and the lights are constantly changing in color so the colors layer up and uh, these are really intricate when you start looking very close at them. So, so the two of you have actually been working together for what 25 years now and yes. uh, uh, what has changed in terms of uh, your perception of the city in that period of time and because uh, this is actually a, a fairly different body of work from what I'm normally used to seeing from you guys and then uh, are there any all, any new directions that you're going to be working in so i we we have been really shooting for a long time things that we think are not going to be around very much longer in the city i mean there's been such in that period such an incredible amount of change especially we live on potrero hill so we've seen the entire mission bay and dog patch neighborhood spring up out of what used to be a very industrial area just just around us really the whole area all around the hill has changed so much and so you would often spot something and and say oh that's not going to be there much longer we need to go photograph it and we were mostly photographing at night uh, and did a lot of really urban urban night photography so we've we've seen all these changes coming and and tried to document some of that, but not in a documentary photography way, more in a fine art photography way, just to really capture the sense of place that we felt in those industrial areas as they were kind of vanishing before our eyes. After the night. Yeah. And, you know, the, the night photography was something we, we, we got excited about very early on. Uh, uh, on a first trip, we photo trip we took together, we out in the, in the in Zion National Park, we we just were playing around on a beautiful summer night, and and th those were in the film days, and we were blown away by the photos we got back, and just said we got to do more of this, and then we plugged into the whole night photography uh, community in San Francisco, which is just a little subculture of its own, and and then we took off from there. But we we do shoot during the day, but a lot of people have never seen any of our other work well, because. The work right behind you was yeah. shot uh, during the day. In fact, why don't we kick off and start talking about uh, some of the uh, the works that are in this particular show? Okay, sounds yeah. great. So um, this this first set of three images um, is is really uh, about feeling. I think it's about how the, the the bay in the morning feels to me. It's really. I've started going out before the pandemic um, about a couple of times a week on the bay, leaving usually I'm on the water a little after 6 a.m. and I'm on the water for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and I take photos and I paddle around. Uh, and then I, I'm, I'm back at home to, to start my, my work day. So um, this, this really has, has been um, 
a lot about the, the feeling of the bay and how um, it's 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 really um, a very quiet time for me, uh, especially so early in the morning before the the city wakes up. Um, the, the, the the light changes rapidly and and uh, and I can see I can feel that the the, the city starts to, to 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 wake up. So. That, that that little uh, heron here, or that great heron, actually, uh, kind of contributes to that to that to that feeling of um, calm here on, on this image. Uh, next one, please. Uh, again, here this is um, down in uh, on by India Basin, which is one of the places uh, I like to go to, uh, right next to Heron Head, and it's uh, again very very simple kind of composition, but it's uh, it's it's really for me, it's really the, the, the feeling of, of calmness and, and, and uh, the, the, the city waking up slowly around me. So next, please. And, and this, um, this is really uh, a, lo a lot of the Im images I take uh, because I'm so close to the water, I'm, I'm trying to, to balance what the, the water looks like and what the sky looks like. And, and some of, uh, a lot of, of the images end up being very graphic and, and, and almost abstract. Uh, I, I love the movement of the water, and um, I, I think every every time I go out, it's a different um, it's, it's a different feel. It's a different weather. It's a different time. As you know, in in the winter, I go out. It's totally dark, and then the the sun rises, and 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 in the summer, I typically will will go out, and it's already daylight. But there's always uh, there's always that element of the, the balancing of the sky and the, and the water and the waves in the water. Next, please. Okay, the next series. So the waterline series is really more uh, graphic and more I, almost painterly in terms of of the um, subject matter. And I I kind of curated this after seeing one of the images and just really locking on that and then thinking about uh, all of these other images that were really shot right at the waterline with these these boats in the image and different light and different reflections. Um, we also learned a, a fact I think that I didn't know which is that the the numbers all have some significance on on you know how heavy the load is in the boat and how high or low in the water it is and uh, there are marks that are called uh, Mark Twain which is where Mark Twain got his pen name uh, on on the boat so uh, you'll see all the different markings on the boat we have over the years create uh, included in our work a lot of um, text and numbers uh, from time to time you'll see that in some of our work if you go back and and so that's something that's very appealing as well. And you'll see that repeated through this series of images. Next slide. So I think this was one of the very first ones that kind of caught, uh, caught my attention when we were putting the show together um, because of the unique lighting and that kind of um, night photography feel here. This is kind of right at daybreak. Um, and the lighting, uh, kind of the blue security lights reflecting down on the uh, the uh, uh, side there with the markings on the ship. And this one obviously is just really looks like a painting with the reflections and the the blurring of the water and the re water reflecting back on the on the metal of the ship. Yeah, I love going under the piers, and I'm probably not supposed to be there, but it's uh, it's a, a different feeling, and the light is is very very interesting. And this one again, you know, the graphic nature of the image, and the and the numbers, and that that beautiful orange stripe, and then the ripply reflections of the water. What this this image is all about? It's very nice, and you get a little hint of the scale by the size of that anchor there. This is a boat that's in the Maritime Museum down in uh, the uh, National Maritime Museum down near Aquatic Park. And it's an old um, uh, steamer that was uh, used in the Delta, Sacramento Delta to San Francisco route, hauling supplies and things. Uh, again, with the 
numbers and the weathering and the beautiful colors that are then reflected in the water. I like that you can see a little bit of the pier back there and the, uh, the early morning light behind the boat. Eureka? The Eureka is the name of the boat. Again, just amazing weathering on the boat and the colors and the, the patterns uh, paired with the, the blue, that blue hour light uh, on the bay behind. We've taken, we've taken photos like this before of paint rusting and different layering of paint on cars in particular. I think that's something that, that's always attracted us. I, I love this one because I think those cryptic larger marks to the right, which may be the Mark Twain, I, I don't know enough about ships to know, but uh, I really loved it. It almost looked like Cyrillic lettering or something and, uh, and, um, and, and the colors are just so dramatic here. Um, it's uh, nice. These are the more, I, I like to call this series the more monumental series. They all have different titles uh, and, and they're all fairly monumental subject matter. So this, so this is uh, one of the views I get when I, when I get out from one of the, my launching points. Uh, there's a long stretch before I get out really into the bay and then this, this, this big ship on the left appears with always that um, the, the bay bridge in the background uh, and sometimes there's seals that are kind of lounge on, on that tip there of, of, of the big ship. Um, so next one. This is uh, again what you're going to have to tell This is an uh, illuminated artwork that's part of uh, Illuminate SF, uh, which is a group that does lit artworks in, in San Francisco. This is Bay, uh, Baby Rising by uh, Laura Dugan and Laura Dugan and Todd, no, Todd Dugan and Laura Haddad, sorry. Uh, again, these amazing lit artworks uh, that are springing up all over San Francisco are just uh, obviously a boon for night photographers. We love this piece and we've seen it for a, a very long time near our house and admired it. And we have some other shots of it. We, we, I, I would never get tired of photographing this with reflections in the water. It's right there on Islaus Creek. Yeah, so that's, that's one of my, my favorite places to launch from. And uh, night, night photography on the water on a kayak is, is, is a bit of more of a technical challenge than, um, than taking photos on a tripod, which is what we're used to doing. But it's, uh, uh, and so there's a, a lot of rejects, a lot of photos that are out of focus. Out of focus or more, well, <laughs> blurred. More, more blurred Movement, from movements. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I started getting the hang of it after a little while. Uh, this one is, is right under the, this is the Bay Bridge. And um, there's, there's lots of, as, as I started looking really uh, for this show and to, into all the images I've taken on the Bay, I realized there's a number of different themes that emerge. And one of them is weather. Um, uh, as, as, as you, you all know, there's a lot of microclimates in San Francisco and a lot of changes, rapid changes sometimes. The fog is always something that's, um, that's part of, of, of what we know around, around the, the, the city. So th this one with that, that bank of fog that's kind of right under the bridge and, and hiding a little bit of that uh, pile it's, was, was, really, uh, was really nice to, to, to look at. So um, yeah, the, 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 other, the other theme is, is, is bridges. And uh, this, um, this, this morning I, I was out near Creasy Field and I, I kind of snuck under the, the Golden Gate Bridge, but it was a, a little rough out there, so I went right back inside. But uh, there's, there's, there's always something going on. There's always a, a different view and different weather. One thing that the, uh, taking up kayaking, and I do go out sometimes, just not the early morning hours with him, but we've really enjoyed taking up kayaking and, and just getting out on the bay has been such a delight uh, and such a respite in, in this crazy time that the last 10 months have been. Uh, it, it, it's just fabulous. We have this incredible resource uh, here. So we, we recently got a, a stand up paddle board too. So we're, we're looking forward to getting uh, into that a, a bit more. And we connected with some paddlers that go out of the new Crane Cove Park in Dog Patch. So we've done a few paddles with them and it's, it's been a lot of fun. So just encourage people, get out there and explore the bay. Yeah. 
and so and one thing that I found really interesting is as I was I've been posting pretty much every day on Instagram and and getting followers and, and realizing there's a, a lot of micro little micro groups that uh, are interested in different things one one being just the, the kayakers on the bay but the other one as I started taking photos of, of, sh of big ships and in the bay in particular there's a whole subculture of, of ship spotting people who are very excited to tell each other that there's a new ship coming in today and uh, they're bringing new cranes for the port of Auckland and, and, and then you'll see people going out taking photos on the bay or from the shore or on, uh, using a drone and it's, it's, it's kind of fun to, to get plugged into different, different subcultures like that. And I'll have to say, if, if any of you know uh, Mike, Mike Kimball's printmaking uh, and he's shown at Art Gallery before as well, um, a lot of the um, photos um, of the uh, ships with the cargoes cargo containers on them uh, are reminiscent of his very graphic print, prints uh, and, and they're just amazing, uh, colorful, beautiful things to take photos of. And we have one of his prints that's the back of a uh, cargo ship. Yeah, of, of a cargo container. Okay, container yeah. Yeah. And this is the, um, the series that I, we were speaking about when we did the little tour of the gallery. You can get a little better sense of the detail here, but they they certainly look great, very large. And um, you can see the variation of the colors. And even uh, at the time, there were uh, little fish coming to the top of the water because of the lights and, and making ripples in the water. Uh, and the water was moving because of boats going by and things. So it, it's just a beautiful visual feast. We really love these um, uh, abstract images a lot. Um, the dimensions on these are so this, this is 60 i think 60 inch by f by 15 or so by 20 maybe yeah so i think so, it's um, about 60 by 18 i think yeah. um they are uh that's the frame size and um uh, they're really fun uh colorful images and i don't know they're you can meditate on them or just uh, be happy looking at the colors but uh we we really like these and We've gone back a few times and we even have a video clip of this and it, it, it's just amazing and ever-changing. I don't, I don't think I could get tired of taking photos of these uh, reflections. So that's the show. We have a few other smaller pieces available in the gallery, uh, including some small pieces uh, printed on acrylic of the, of the abstract ones like this that are on acrylic blocks and back mounted. And we have some um, photos of another local icon, the Sutro Tower, which is also another thing we love to take photos of, including a photo of the Sutro Tower with the glowing pink uh, triangle that we had uh, this year uh, for Pride, uh, which we were so happy to see. We were wondering if, of course, Pride was all virtual, if we were gonna have the triangle or not. And, uh, and then suddenly the glowing triangle appeared uh, and we were so happy to see it. So we, we uh, made a photograph of that and that was in the Art for AIDS auction uh, and uh, was the subject of some hot bidding. So we were really happy about that. So um, a bunch of people have uh, been uh, chatting about uh, your talk. So um, uh, I, there are a couple questions in the chat and people can certainly type their questions into chat and I'll relay them along. Uh, or if you want to ask a question in person, you can just type Q and I'll, uh, I'll ask you to unmute yourself and you can, you can do that as well. Uh, uh, some of the people wanted you to talk a little bit more about the process on the galactic works. Want to explain one minute? Sure, you? sure. It's, yeah. um, these are uh, a little bit longer exposures. Um, the, the sculpture itself is programmed with uh, random light sequences with literally thousands of colors and color combinations of these LED lights that are constantly uh, flashing and moving and uh, pulsing. And um, so this is looking down into the water. Um, they, they actually cut a hole in the pier so you see the water underneath the sculpture, it's all open. And so the camera's pointing directly down uh, and capturing 
the reflection as the light changes, as the water moves uh, over about 30 seconds or so. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, some, uh, uh, some others uh, were wondering about the dimensions. Now, I know that the dimensions are a little bit sort of flexible uh, yeah, in that uh, uh, you can print the works in various sizes. I, I, I don't know if you addition in various sizes. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we, we do uh, addition in different sizes. Where, so the, the smallest pieces that we have in the show are, are 16 by, well, so the, the, the metal prints are 16 by 24. Um, but we, we've been printing, we, we like to print large if we can. Um, and so the, the 30 by 40 are kind of the, the, the biggest, some of the biggest we've, we've, we've printed, but we, we certainly have a lot of flexibility on the, in the size. So some of the uh, smaller pieces, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the uh, waterline pieces, uh, those could be much larger, I assume. It could be, yes, certainly. Yes, and could be printed on, uh, on metal. Yeah. Um, we, we have a really nice printer at home, and, and we have discovered some really nice papers that we love to print with, so we do like to print on paper, too, and those, those turned out really uh, nicely with the, uh, with the paper prints, but they could be on metal, and they could be printed quite, quite a bit larger as well. Could you talk a little bit uh, about how you work collaboratively? Now, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with some of the work you've done in the not as part of studio nocturne where you sort of paint with light um and it's kind of a two-person job it's uh but what about um these pieces or just in general how do you work together well a lot of these are meant as solo kayaking trips so there's not a lot of collaboration in the actual uh capture of the image but of course uh photographers know the capture of the image is just the first step and then there's the making of the images and the the thinking about the images and getting the colors right and the, the curating of the show when you start to put, uh, to put a show together. And so we're all involved, uh, we're, we're both involved in all of that, even uh, if one of us has done the, the capture separately. Um, when we're shooting together and when we're night shooting, sometimes we'll each have a camera and we'll be shooting uh, the same subject matter with two different lenses or or setups on on our digital cameras sometimes uh, we used to have one film camera going and one digital camera going but now we're we're pretty much solely digital except for some antique cameras that we take out from time to time but uh, we talk about especially when we're doing a project and michael you re may remember the sunset uh, series we did for four squared that was a more lengthy project and we talked about the project and how we wanted to execute on it and then we went out and looked for subject matter together and planned the project and went out on a series of nights and, and shot together and then we curated together and, and, and prepared the prints for the show and that, that may be a project that we go back to again and do some more sunset uh, photos. We really like that neighborhood and, and have discovered a lot of subject matter we'd like to shoot out there. But that's, you know, kind of thinking about our work as a project and going back and curating. One thing during the pandemic, I think we've had a little more time to start going back and looking at um, some of our older images and thinking about themes that run through a lot of our work. And, and that's been really fun too. Anything well, Jason else? Berkman, I noticed that Jason Berkman was making an observation and asked if you'd seen the octopus uh, documentary. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've seen it as well, but yeah. uh, he was he was looking at uh, kind of from the perspective of what you were just talking about, Greta, which is seeing things change over time and then revisiting things that have changed over time. Is that part of your work where you uh, kind of will go back to subjects and 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 photograph them again at, uh, at you know, over a period of time? Yeah, we do sometimes. I think um, that's some of the night work we've done, we've, we've gone back and uh, one, one, one piece in particular where we took photos of that uh, uh, old um, gas station at night in the, in, in the dark patch that's not all gone. But we went back because there was graffiti on the back that was changing constantly. There's always the, the interesting to come back. And I, I think, you know, being on the bay and being Seeing, seeing kind of the same places very regularly, I, I, I tend to 
see it with a different eye every time and, and, and reinterpret it in a way. And the same thing, I think, when we were, the Sutro Tower uh, is a frequent subject in our, our photos because we have a view out our window of it and we see the various, uh, you know, the microclimates, the fog coming in, the, the sunsets, the morning light, and the, just the ever-changing, uh, uh, even lightning once in a while. Uh, so it's, it's just those kinds of subject matter there's certain things you just never get tired of shooting and, and going back to. And then we find that even if we think we know San Francisco, but we stumble on some little pocket of San Francisco that we get really excited about the, uh, the subject matter, the visual subject matter, and, and just have to go back and keep, keep shooting. And we've been yeah. asking ourselves sometimes, like, how do you know when a project is done? You know, I think it's not until you kind of, find nothing else to, to shoot. Yeah, I think I think also going on the bay and photographing from the bay is, is, is giving me a, a new a new angle, a new a new understanding of the city and, and a, a new love of it too. It's a different way of looking at it and understanding it. Yeah, one of the people was asking what attracted you to print on metal, finding it somewhat fascinating that the subject matter, at least in, in some of this work, is ships and the, you know, the metallic nature of the ships and then also uh, uh, taking those images and printing them on metal. I'm not sure if there's any relationship there, uh, but what attracted you to, uh, to print on metal? Yeah, we've, we've, been, uh, we've been having that, uh, we, well, we don't print it ourselves, but we have a lab that does it. And we've, we've been working with them for probably 15 or 20 years. We started printing on metal a lot of our, our night photography work, especially in the very colorful work. And I personally, I, I really like when, um, when this is it's just the image that's on the wall. It's a little bit raised from the wall and that gives it a bit of a, of a three dimensional effect, but really it's um, the, the, the metal makes the, the color pop really. Uh, and, and when, when it's very colorful, it really brings just, just uh, that color uh, to the forefront. And also just having the image with no no frame, no glass on top of it, really, it's just about the image. It's not about anything else. And I really like that personally. I think one of the first ship images that we printed on metal, we just were blown away because it looked like it was illuminated from, mm. from within. It, it looked golden and it was, it was really, it was one of the uh, ships uh, over uh, on Alameda Island that are in a state of readiness. Uh, and uh, they're just battleship gray. But with the light on it at night and then printing it on metal, it looked like gold. Yeah, uh, you know, your work has a real quiet quality to it. I mean, even, you know, the night photography uh, things that you've done, uh, you know, and, and that gas station, which, you know, has this um, almost an ominous quietness to it. Uh, but uh, with the works on the bay, do you always shoot in serene weather? I mean, uh, uh, have you tried shooting in, in um, more challenging weather. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I've, I've gone out just a couple of times when it was raining a little bit, drizzling a little bit. It just, it just doesn't. Um, well, it hasn't rained much, I guess. But I, I certainly go out when, when there's, there's some wind and, and in the fog. I've gone out several times, so I, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy. For the photography side, I certainly enjoy any any kind of weather. It's it's uh, the the changing weather is really interesting here. The rougher the water, the harder it is to get sharp photos. Right. Though I would think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you ever shoot people, or is it almost entirely structures and landscapes? <laughs> we ha are kind of shy about taking photos of people, uh, and. Uh, you know, good good portraits are, are really hard, and um, so uh, we have not done that many photos of people. Um, and uh, you know, please for goodness' sake, don't ask us to shoot a wedding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, we learned that lesson really early. Uh, and uh, you yeah. know, we we talk about wanting to shoot and I remember Ann Jastrab was was doing a portfolio review very early on uh, after we started taking photos she was doing a portfolio review for us and uh, and she's like oh maybe you should put some people in there 
and uh, we've just kind of never really been able to do it. We're more sneaky. Well, you did put a crane in one of your photos this time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and we like that quiet quality. It's one of the things about shooting photos at night when there is no one around that is just serene and magical. So mm -hmm. we, we love getting out there when there is no one around. Yeah. I think that one of the things that people were talking, uh, at least one person asked about was, you know, you talk how important the community is to you and, you know, particularly the community that, you know, you've helped you discover the Bay. Uh, and they were just wondering if you had ever thought about community, uh, incorporating that community into your work. But, uh, but then somebody else pointed out your work doesn't need any people. <laughs> <laughs> There are plenty yeah. of people who take wonderful photos of people, so yeah. we yeah. may leave that to them. I don't know. Yeah. How close <laughs> do you get to those ships when you're out on the bay? Uh, closer than I should, probably. Um, you know, so some of them I, I I can I could touch them. I'm, I'm right next to them. Um, I mean, so I, I wouldn't do that to to ship that are moving clearly, but uh, you know, especially the ones that are anchored, and I know they're not gonna they're not gonna move. Uh, anytime soon uh I, I get i get very close it's uh it's I, i've started taking photos of, of container ships as well and and it's just um, being next to those giants is is just so impressive and and, and just makes you feel small but it's uh it's I, I will say you know marine radio uh and he follows the ship schedule so he kind of knows when boats are going to be moving or not so um you know it, it's and and you're you're coming from pretty far away so you you have a good sense of yeah. of them they don't move quickly and you pretty much yeah when the tugboats start moving and you, i start yeah. following them seeing yeah. where, which which <laughs> ship they're going to and which ship is going to start moving soon but um, yeah. you, you get a, a lot of uh, a lot of time to prepare on the bay it's 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 pretty big and you can see the ships from a distance well, I want to thank everybody for being so interactive on this chat. This has been, uh, you know, a really fun um, artist talk. Um, thank you all very, very much for uh, uh, for showing up. It's uh, been a great group. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank I wish you. we could have talked personally with everyone, but I, I great to see so many friends' names popping up on the chat.